Hey, welcome back to the Mobile Homestead. So happy that you joined me today because I've got a couple of really awesome things to show you. First is I got a new toy in the mail. Um, this was my little pandemic treat yourself. Um, and second is, of course, our next garden walkthrough where we're going to see everything is finally outside. Everything's been transplanted. Everyone's in their new homes. And now we just play the waiting and growing game. So here we go. So first up is my new toy, got a dehydrator. And this was one that I found on eBay for 130 bucks. I think the brand is Rosewell. And the main thing that I was looking for is something that is going to be a variable temperature. So I can go through and actually set the exact temperature that I'd like it to. Being able to set the specific temperature, I can do things like herbs, which need to go very, very low temp, all the way up to meats. Uh, really excited and so far so good. Let's take a quick peek at what I've got going on in here. Um, I just learned online that you can do marshmallows. I have all these mini marshmallows left over and uh, they're supposed to turn into kind of like a Lucky Charms marshmallow consistency. Got some strawberry bits, um, doing some grape tomatoes, some with salt, some without, but these are halved. Um, same with the blueberries. I have a tray of blueberries that are cut in half. Uh, got some banana chips. And I've got a tray of blueberries that are whole. Just kind of want to see how long it takes to dehydrate whole blueberries as opposed to the halved ones. And you can tell, I mean, these ones are super flat and wrinkly, but these ones are still, still pretty, pretty full. Getting a little squish, but. So yeah, we're going to have some fun adventures in dehydrating. This is literally my first ever run with this. And um, as you can see by the missing spots, I've just been periodically trying things out. So far I'm not disappointed and I think it's only going to get better. So that's my new toy. Having fun with that. There is not much in the house anymore. Um, a lot of my plants that I didn't have room for, a lot of my starts found new homes and have gone there. Um, this basil plant is going to find a new home. And then really I've just got a few of these starters here of flowers. I'm still looking for a home for one honey nut winter squash. If nobody wants it, I will put it in a bucket outside, but I do already have one. I, know. I was only planning on having one, so if anyone wants one, just let me know. And then up front we have the bell peppers under the light still, but I'm, I mean, there's not much going on. They're not really doing anything with those, so let's go outside and see the garden. Excuse me, Shyla. Are you in the way? Yeah. Yeah, you just need to be by mama all the time. My little baby girl. Is she being good? <gasps> She's being so good. So we've had carpenter bees living in our deck, and um, not really sure if that's good or not. But I just kind of wanted to show you guys what that looks like. So if you're ever like, "What is all of this?" You know. Um, so all of that goop right there. That is actually what the carpenter bee has chewed up and spat out from it digging a little tunnel into this wood right here. And there's one here and there's one over on the other, like the corner of the deck. And I mean, they're pollinators and I don't really want to hurt them or anything. And they haven't really done us any harm. They just kind of like fly around right here. So, so what John and I have done is name them and we just kind of figured that as long as they're not causing us any problems, we won't cause them any problems. We do have to make sure that the dogs aren't trying to eat them. Um, but uh, really, just naming them kind of helped. Um, the one by the stairs is named Buzz Buzzington, and then we have uh, Horatio Honeycomb down on the other end. And now we just talk to them and say excuse me when we walk up the stairs, and they get out of the way. And so far, so good on the cohabitating, so, you know, gotta love your bee friends. Here we go, it's garden time. Lola likes to randomly pick out a stick. So these are some new friends that I've got. Um, I went to go get more dirt the other day and of course I can't go to a place without getting more stuff. Um, this is called a blue-eyed beauty and is supposed to produce a lot more flowers. They're probably gonna come out of all these little nubs here. But I saw last night this flower actually closes up at night and reopens and I thought that was the neatest thing. This, I could not help myself from getting. This is a two-year-old rosemary, and I got it for seven bucks. Oh, it smells so good. I literally just, every time I come out here, just touch this and smell it, and it's just... It smells like Christmas to me, I think, because of just holiday cooking. Like, rosemary just reminds me of, like, 
tasty meats and holiday foods. Um, got some decorations too. This actually has solar panels that like all of these jewels light up. Um, got some hanging stuff. Some pretty little butterflies. A few changes to the herb palette planner. Um, so up, up top, the whole entire top rung was supposed to be mint. I laid mint seeds in the whole thing. Um, I'm pretty sure that there's some mint sprouts that might be one. That's also the same kind of thing, so like maybe um, anything that's an obvious weed like clover or something I've been pulling out and still just kind of letting this go to see. Um, I trans transplanted some summer savory out here, so that'll actually take up this space now. This bowl is the other parsley and then some chives. I just transplanted this yesterday. But I just want to see if this does better in the bowl as compared to this palette planner. The cilantro, I've thinned down to just the cilantro. I was able to specifically tell. It's starting to get their true leaves in. Chives here. Some garlic chives. They're coming up. And chives is basically grass. So really what I should have done when seeding this is lay seeds across the whole thing. And as you can tell, I laid a pretty proper line. So um, we'll see how that goes. I got some basil transplanted out here. And someone ate a hole in my basil leaf. So mad, some, some little bug ate a hole in my basil. And then we got some more parsley down here. This purple pot has seeds for a plant called strawberry spinach. I've never heard of it before this year when I saw it in a seed catalog but it's supposed to have leaves that are edible and taste like spinach and then a red berry that it produces that tastes like strawberry. The whole entire plant's edible. Really excited to try it out. I have no idea what's going to come up or when, but we'll see. And then back behind the planter, I am really excited to show you guys my fairy garden. <laughs> we got these little, these little mushroomy doodads. Um, and I've had the chairs and stuff for a while, but what I did was I actually took one of the black uh, seed starting trays and filled it full of rocks and sunk it. So that way there's this kind of little space here. And when it rains, this should actually fill up a little bit with water. And then my thought was that like pollinators and stuff, bees can land on these rocks and have, you know, access to a tiny bit of water. So Next up, these green onions are just going loco. And if you were curious what a green onion flower looks like, it's just a bulb with... Man, I wish I had a better lens to be able to, like, focus at a closer depth, but it's just a ton of these little, like, explosions of, of teeny petals. Got some more buds. This little one is doing all right. Back here, same story. Have some mushrooms coming up and I think that just means that the soil is nice so hopefully that's a good thing. I'm really pretty sure that the strawberries are forming now. Let's see what we got like there's just all of these under there and back in there so yeah hopefully we're gonna good harvest this year. I've got some wildflowers growing right here that I decided to leave. They're called asters um, and you can get them actually you can buy seeds for all different kinds that have all different colors um, just since they're next to my strawberries in the garden, I'm not really doing much over here for now, so I just figured I'd leave them. This is another plant that I just got. I got it at the same greenhouse that I got the rosemary. It is called apple mint. <laughs> another plant I specifically bought for the smell. It's like, it's like the best kind of mint gum. It's not like a traditional just mint. I don't know. It's like even, even more like of a fruity, just like, I don't know. I really... I can't stop like just smelling it and like it's just so good <laughs> it's, it's really like just so and what's funny too with mint is you don't chew on the leaf and get the same effect as popping a mint in your mouth it's you're gonna get the cooling effects from the oils and stuff so the actual taste of it like it's not gonna be a sweet mint like a wintergreen you know lifesaver or something but but then once you breathe, when you have the oils in your mouth, you kind of feel that cooling. And I think it's going to be really nice during the summer to come out and just like pick some leaves and like throw it in my water that I'm drinking or whatever, you know, make some mojitos. It's going to be so nice. Pineapple plant. Still doing pretty good. Still got the borage here and the creeping jenny and that's starting to fill out nicely. So once that all gets nice and full, I'm not even going to see the dirt anymore and it's going to be great. Here has seen a little bit of change. So the spinach that was here did absolutely terrible. It all started bolting. So in its stead, 
I had this celery that I got at Kroger, was rooting inside, it has since been planted. Right in here, thereabout, I have a dark purple basil, I think it's called dark opal, that I stuck some seeds in for. And then I think I've got like four or five spots around in here that I've put um, green bean seeds, and hopefully those will be sprouting in the next day or two. I was really hoping it was going to be sprouted now so I could show you kind of the initial popping out of the ground because it's so fun. Lettuce is still doing pretty good. The nasturtiums here are filling out really nicely. You can kind of tell like these are the original leaves that have been on it since it was in the house and then these are new leaves that have sprouted since it's been outside and you can kind of tell the dark versus light colors of like this leaf had to adjust to sunlight. This light, this leaf has basically only ever seen sunlight. Um, I just think it's kind of neat how the plant fills out like that. So here's the spinach and lettuce bed where all of this was seeds that were started in the ground as opposed to being started inside with the exception of this little guy. That little one is the only remaining member of spinach from that bed that I originally started inside it got to be huge when it was inside and then it just completely hated being transplanted so like compare that to like just oh my god like this one here just one leaf compared to the entire plant i mean it's just pathetic so um and it looks like something kind of ate a little bit of this leaf so i'm gonna eat the rest of this leaf this is what i've been doing for the past like two three nights um to kind of get the lettuce and stuff to produce more is so I've just been coming out here and plucking some random leaves just eating them it's good raw spinach you know can't get literally any more fresh than that here we've planted out some of the I think this is some of the calendula but I actually forgot to label this when I when I transplanted it so I got some more creeping Jenny and I've decided it's just gonna stay in this pot I think I've ripped enough of it apart and I've got elsewhere um, some, and I've got a ton of rocks from Lake Superior that I've had for a couple of years and I just like putting around the garden. If you've never been to Lake Superior or you don't know about it, um, the Great Lakes are formed, were formed by glaciers and specifically Lake Superior is known for having just an abundance of the coolest rocks in the world making up its shoreline. So this is the other kind of nasturtium that I started inside. I think it's the papaya cream. Um, so these are going to have different colors than that one, but it's still going to get nice and full. Still edible flowers and leaves, um, so that'll be nice. Got some more borage. Look at this bed of radish and kale and carrots. I've actually gone through and thinned these already, and I'm probably due for another thinning on the kale at the very least. But the carrots went through and thinned a few days ago, and as soon as I thinned them, I came out the next morning, and every one that was left behind sprouted their first true leaf. So I think they were all really happy that I did that. Ah, oh, these radishes are doing so good. Um, I'm really excited for about two weeks from now when I get to harvest these. <laughs> these are so incredibly fast growing. And then these kale are doing great. They're getting some of their first true leaves in, so they're starting to get that ruffle. These are another kind of zinnia. Um, I think they're called Zahara mixed. Um, but these will be a ton of beautiful flowers once they get get going so that'll be nice kind of just filling up this corner right here you guys look at these peas look at how crazy they are look at these boys go I mean they're just going nuts tendrils going everywhere janky little gate here but you know work with what you got is the motto of the season here we go so in our first corner we have black beauty zucchini this is a bush variety, and very soon I'm going to put a cage up on it, but for now it's doing pretty good. Over here we've got our early girl tomatoes. I'm really happy with how these are going. They've adjusted very well to being outside. This one here is doing real good. Also underneath, right there, I've got a little marigold that I sprouted inside. This is a, I just believe, like petite gold marigold. So get a little color out the side there. Just the one cucumber plant in here. And it's funny, see how they still have the seed leaves right there, even though all of these true leaves have already came out. Sometimes seedlings will drop their seed leaves once they start, you know, getting their actual true leaves. Sometimes they won't. I just think it's kind of neat how, how plants differ. Um, got a marigold in here as well. This, I believe, is the French vanilla. 
so that'll be just a white marigold. This cucumber bucket is the one that has two plants. So you can kind of see like a, a size comparison. So like as compared to my hand, there's the one leaf. And then this one is, is a bit bigger. And then our cherry tomato plants here, doing real good. Everyone's adjusted pretty well, standing straight up. The only thing that I'm really nervous about, these two leaves right here are wilted and it's making me really nervous because there's a lot of reasons that tomatoes could wilt and that just means they end up dying and not producing anything. I have no idea why that one is doing it. I don't really know too, too much, but I do know that I don't want it to infect the rest of my plants. So I'm going to go get my snips and actually just prune off both of these branches and see if we can keep that from spreading. So here we have the dragon tongue bush beans. And I believe the last garden tour we did either I had just planted these seeds or they had just started to think about sprouting. But um, since then, all six seeds that I sprouted came up. I've thinned down to two plants. Um, here's an interesting thing about beans. So this right here that I'm kind of flicking, that is not the, not the seed leaf, but that's actually the bean. That's, that's the actual bean that I planted. It, it stays attached to the stem as it grows up and out, and then it starts to die back and wither away. But this bucket, as well as all of my squashes, I didn't do the self-watering method. I just went with drilling holes in the bottom, putting them on these boards to raise them up so they can drain. And I'll just have to make sure I'm staying on top of watering them. And then over in the squash corner, we have summer squash, and winter squash, and you can tell by looking at all of these leaves just how important it is to label everything because as I was transplanting these, even though I have all these popsicle sticks with labels, I still was second guessing myself at times just because they are so similar. And I mean, we'll, we'll know sure enough once they start setting fruit, but for now, um, they're extremely, extremely similar. So I'm hoping that um, how I've got these arranged, you know, like this bean is going to go and get crazy and then really die back. Um, I'm pretty sure before it gets too, too hot in the summer and then this is going to start to take over. Um, and then once that dies back, this one is going to really be bushed out. I don't know though. I might be entirely making that up. And that's part of the fun of gardening is you can have a plan and then mother nature is going to set you straight on what the reality is actually going to be. So, oh hi Shyla. Shyla, you being a super cute dog? Yes. Um, so both of these had sprouts and this one's still kind of struggling, but with the weather that we had, it was like 85 degrees for five days straight and it just totally killed all of my seedlings that I had. Holy crap, wait a minute, maybe there's another one coming. I had so many days of high degree weather, um, I just decided to go back through and I put new seeds for Swiss chard in here hoping to like get a second round going. We'll see what actually happens with these. I have no idea if my Swiss chard idea was going to work. Let's see. Yeah, there's a new sprout right there too and I'm really hoping that it's actually Swiss chard. But we shall see. The lilac bush has finally started to kind of flower. There's, you know, all these little teeny tiny babies. So I'm hoping that there will be an explosion in the next, like, day to week. But we shall see. So, you know, adventures in gardening. So happy with how this is turning out. Everybody has a home now. What's up, big happy family? Everyone's 
Stop it, Andy.